In this video, I'm going to show you how to compare um, uh, the same gene in two different organisms. Um, we're going to be using two resources, so I'm on the uh, website page 3.1 Genes, and I'm going to use the Gene Bank, and I'm going to use the Sequence Alignment Tool. So first of all, just click on Gene Bank. Um, this is an online database where scientists can upload gene sequences that they, uh, that they discover. And at the top here, instead of nucleotide, I'm going to um, select gene, which I can find in the list here. And I've selected the, um, the gene that I'm interested in is rhodopsin. Um, so I just make sure I've got gene, type in the name of the gene I'm interested in, and I click on search. Now it'll come up with a whole load of different genes that, have, that the scientist entering it has named um, rhodopsin. At the top here, um, see there's rhodopsin, says rhodopsin-like, and then it says the name Burton's mouth brooder. I happen to know that that's a species of fish. Um, you can just Google these different uh, species. You've got the, the binomial name here. You can just Google that and see exactly what it is. Um, I'm going to open this in a new tab. Okay, and I'm also, because I'd like to get the human version of rhodopsin, so I'm just going to type rhodopsin and then human. Um, and here it is at the top, okay, rhodopsin homo sapiens. So I'm going to click on that. So I've now got the same gene, but in two different species. This is in a human, and then the other is in rhodopsin. Now, um, it gives me all sorts of information here. Under summary, it tells me what the gene does. Um, here's some information about the location. It tells me it's on chromosome number three, and then there's all sorts of other technical information that uh, um, you probably know as, better, as well as I do exactly what all this means. Anyway, looking at the human gene, I'm going to scroll quite far down the page until I get to the section that says NCBI reference sequence. And down here, I'm going to click on faster. This is going to give me the, um, the base sequence of the gene. Now, this is a relatively short gene. That's why I selected it for this video, but yours could be really, really long. Um, I can just notice down here there's a repeating sequence of C's and A's. It's quite interesting. Um, I'm going to do the same for the um, Burton's mouth brood of the fish. Um, I'm going to go down to, where's the faster sequence now? And there it is, I'll click on that. And here it is for the fish, and immediately I can see that the, um, the gene in the fish is a lot shorter than the gene in the human. But presumably there must be some parts that are similar because they've presumably evolved from the same gene in the past. So first of all, I'm just going to copy the, um, the sequence for the human gene. And then I'm going to open this other tool, the sequence alignment tool. What this is going to do is kind of align the similar parts of the two gene sequences um, in order so that we can compare them. I'm going to change from protein to DNA because this is a DNA sequence, not an amino acid sequence. And I'm going to click on example sequence just to kind of give me the structure of how I need to enter my data. Instead of test one, I'm going to call this human and I'm going to paste my gene in here. Then I'm going to go back to, this is the gene in the Burton's mouth breeder, the fish. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to rename test two. I'm just going to call it fish. I'm going to delete the last test because I'm only comparing two sequences. And I'm going to replace this example sequence with my sequence. So now you see I've got human and then I've got the human sequence. And then I'll get down to the bottom of that. It says fish and then I've got the fish sequence. And then I'm going to click on submit. Now, for this might take a few seconds. Again, I've picked two relatively short genes. I did it for this video to make it quicker. Um, it could take you five or ten minutes for your, um, for your genes if they're much longer genes. Okay, so here it is. So what it's done, it's aligned the genes, human along the top, fish along the bottom. So the human gene, it goes along the top there. It gives the first 60 bases, and then it continues here. So you can just see this as these different lines as a continuation of the same gene. Now, um, looking at this, I can see that there's some regions um, here 
you can see, where um, the, the human gene has a sequence, but the fish gene has, has nothing there. So as you can see, there's far more bases in the human gene than in the, the fish gene. Now, this could be that the fish gene was more the ancestral version, <clears throat> and over evolutionary time, since uh, fish and humans split a long time ago, maybe these new bases have um, evolved through mutation in the, the human version. You can see here, whenever you've got an asterisk, that shows that the two bases are the same. Um, and it might be that that's, that's, that, for example, in this case, the C, maybe that C was there in the ancestral version of the gene. That means in the ancestors um, before fish and humans separated evolutionarily. Now you can see, see this, these two bases here, there is no um, asterisk, it means that they are different. Humans have a T, whereas fish have a C. Maybe um, the ancestor had a T, and in fish at some point there was a mutation to a C. Or maybe vice versa, maybe C is the ancestral form, and in humans there was a mutation from a C to a T. <coughs> but we don't know. Here's another bit where the humans have um, some bases um, and fish don't. Again, maybe the bases were there in the ancestor and they got deleted um, in the fish, or vice versa. Maybe they were never there in the ancestral form, but they evolved to be there in the human form. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see there's large regions here where they're very similar to each other. That's what you would expect, given that um, you know, this is the same gene in two different species. So you would expect some similarity. Um, and then you've got here large areas where the human and the fish, the human has um, bases, but the fish has none. There's that long sequence of A's and C's that I saw earlier. Um, so scroll all the way down. And then there's more sequences again where, um, where they are very comparable, very similar to each other again here. Okay, and through this, um, we can compare the structures of the same gene in different species. You can actually do this with many different genes. So you'd have, instead of just two species, you could have like five or 10 species here, and it would compare them all. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thank you.